Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are in the... Well, Cameron, Cameron, <laughs> Cameron, Cameron's... T- tell us, Cameron, what what salutation should I be doing for you? It's 10.34pm, so... Oh, uh, good night, maybe? Yeah, okay, good evening. <laughs> we're, uh, we're this week in WordPress, we're back again, episode number 212. I think this episode is going to be called... We're all tired <laughs> because Cameron's tired for good reason. I'm tired for a different reason, which will become obvious in a minute. I don't know if Michelle's tired because presumably it's I like love, six, love seven that. o'clock there. What, what time is it? It's 9 a.m. <laughs> oh, that's not so bad. You're not tired. No. Two of us are tired. Uh, anyway, I just this... always, I live in a perpetual state of tiredness. Though. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Um, this week in WordPress is episode number 212. We're going to talk about the, the WordPress stuff. I have to apologize to our guests. Typically, I would share the, the show notes uh, like at least five, three or four days in advance, but I had to throw them together at the last minute this week. So our guests are probably uh, l- less prepared than they would otherwise be, but hopefully. I thought it was just going to be a free for all. We just talked oh, about Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not that badly prepared. But uh, yeah, so we, we're going to talk about the WordPress news from this week, largely to do with the sort of WordCamp Europe event and say there's a sale of a plugin, well, several plugins and various other bits and pieces. Um, But before all of that, I should probably introduce our guests. Michelle is very often here, but it's lovely to have you back, Michelle. Thank you. You're very welcome. Michelle is the... She is the Director of Community Engagement for Stella WP, which is at Liquid Web. And in addition to her work at Stella WP, Michelle is the podcast barista at WP Coffee Talk. She's the co-founder of underrepresentedintech.com, creator of wpcareerpages.com, president of the board for bigorangeheart.org, director of community relations and contributor at poststatus.com. She's an author, business coach, and a frequent organizer and speaker at WordPress events. She lives in Rochester, New York, <clears throat> where she's an avid nature photographer. And you can find about, out more about her at meetmichelle.online. There you go. I'm now horse. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's, you, you're always doing a lot. Does anything ever get added or do you ever? Okay, let me ask this question differently. Do you ever take things out of the in tray? Do you ever like decide I'm not going to do a thing anymore? Because it always seems like there's just more things that Michelle does. Well, I've been getting better at saying no. So it's more like not adding to the in tray and kind of, you know, working with with the status quo as it is right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, That's good. I'm I'm pleased to hear it. Look after yourself first. That's a good idea. I was uh, supposed to build a a website for a chicken farm and I just had to... (laughs) I literally had to say I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a that's a fair one to uh, to decline. But of course, we've got Cameron. Cameron joined us. Oh, what is it now, Cameron? About six weeks ago, maybe more, oh, uh, a couple of months, something like that. And uh, and he had real problems with his internet, such that basically he was unable to participate. And about a third of the way, halfway through, he he bailed. So it's really great to have you back, Cameron. Despite the fact that it's stupid o'clock, I'm really sorry about that. But Cameron is a professional WordPress developer. He's the founder of the plugin store, Mongoose Marketplace. He's the maintainer of the official Kofi plugin and developer at Pixel Palace, which is an Australian brand growth agency. He lives in a little beach town uh, called Victoria Harbour in Australia. You're going to have to help me with the geography. Uh, Whereabouts is Victoria Harbour? Sorry, Victor. It's not Victoria. It's Victor Harbour. Yeah, so Victor Harbour is it's about 100 100 k south of Adelaide. So yep. Adelaide's the the capital city of South Australia, um, where you've got Australia, where you've got the Great Australian Bite, where it kind of looks like someone's taking a bite out of it. Yeah, um, yeah. So in the middle of there, and then you find Adelaide, and you go straight south for about an hour and a half. Is it called the Great Australian Bite, as in B I T E, or is it B I G H T? Like bite is a different thing to a bite with a mouth. I, I think it's B I G H T. Yeah, yeah. Goodness, so, it's uh, going back to primary school geography there. Yeah, um, that's right. It's the curvy bit, but it does look like a, someone's taking yeah. a big chunk. <laughs> yeah, out of that's it. right. Yeah, yeah. Imagine tipping the Apple logo up on its side and the little. Yeah, yeah. It's Pretty much. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you. Really appreciate you joining us today. T- tell us a little about the Kofi plugin because I I didn't honestly know that you did that and and I stumbled across with the help of a friend 
stumbled across Kofi as a as a platform. It's like a bit like a rival to Patreon, right? You can you sort of set up yes. a page. It's a SaaS product, and they, unlike Patreon, if I'm right, they don't take a cut. Whatever you receive yep. uh, as a donation, you get. Is that right? Yep. Yep. So yeah, you're right. It's a Patreon contri- competitor. Um, it started out more as just a simple donation platform, but it's grown to add a membership onto that. Um, so yeah, they don't take any fees for uh, their donations. Like there might be a, a merchant fee or something that just comes with the payment platform. But um, yeah, they don't take a cut like Patreon do. Um, but like they're like them, they've got um, it's called a gold tier, I think it's called. Oh, okay. Um, and so you get extra features for your membership that you as the creator pay for, and that's how they make their money. Okay, I see. T- typically, um, I think Patreon is more for people that are producing content, isn't it? You know, so like podcasts and things where Kofi seems like a good fit for basically anybody who wants to take some sort of donation. You can, you know, it's not bound really to a, a product or a thing. You could just say it out loud on your podcast or yep. give people the URL at the bottom of your website or something. And, you, you know, you can do recurring and you can just do a one-off. It's great. It's really cool. So, oh, bravo. I didn't know that. I have a Kofi page somewhere, but I never mention it, um, which kind of, kind of defeats the point. <laughs> but um, let's get on. Let's crack on today with the WordPress stuff. Just a quick one before we begin. This is our website. If you haven't heard me droning on about it enough, I'm going to drone on about it a little bit more. It's it's wpbuilds.com, as you might expect. It's a WordPress website. It just basically contains all of the bits and pieces that we make. If you go to the, the live page linked here, you're, this is where we're broadcasting right now. It goes into a Facebook group and what have you, but it's always encouraged to go to the, the web page itself. Um, and we've got a subscribe link here. And if you want to fill out that, f- there's a form on there. We'll keep you up to date with the bits and pieces that we produce. Typically, it's two bits of content a week. We've got a, a website podcast that we do, WP Builds Podcast. And then there's the show that we're doing now. And very soon, in about an hour and a half from now, both Cameron and Michelle will also be made to wave in a humiliating fashion um, towards the camera, just like this. So they're the sort of two bits of content that we produce. And yeah, wpbuilds.com is our thing. There's a couple of comments coming in. Always like to share the comments. Before I do that, though, um, let's just tell you how you might do that. The best way probably is to either go to our live page, which I said, wpbuilds.com forward slash live, or you can go to our Facebook group, wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook. If you leave a comment there, hopefully it will come through onto our little system here. But on the Facebook end, you need to do an extra step. Otherwise, you'll be anonymized. Uh, I think you only need to do it once until you clear your cookies out, but uh, you need to go to chat.restream.io forward slash fb chat.restream.io forward slash fb and that will allow us to see your lovely face and if you feel like sharing this stream just put the coffee down you know just set it down one side and uh, go to wpbuilds.com forward slash live copy and paste that url and bung it in all the places where there's an option and uh you know it'd be nice to have some more Friendly faces. Speaking of friendly faces, the ever so close to me, Elliot Sowersby, uh, who I've never yet met, but he lives, I could throw a pebble um, and it wouldn't hit his house because I'm not that good of a thrower, but uh, I could still throw a pebble in his direction because I know it's south and it's not that far. Elliot, one day you and I will meet uh, probably in a, on a beach somewhere and neither of us will recognize each other, but at least there'll have been some serendipity. Uh, Pichoneri says, hello. I was in a bar with Pichoneri about 36 hours ago and it was absolutely fabulous, wasn't it, Picha? Oh, so nice. We had delicious things, uh, including delicious olives. And she's saying, uh, so nice that you got home, Nathan. Yeah, I did. I managed to get home, despite the fact that my train had been cancelled. I managed to do it. And Taco, I've got a photo here, Taco. I'll dig it out in a minute of, <laughs> of me and Taco. Well, I think it is. Oh, hang on. I'm going to find it because it's hysterically funny. Uh, I'm intrigued. Oh, uh, it is good. I'll tell you what. I'll do. T- I'll just say what Taco said first. He said, "So happy to see your co-host Michelle today." Nathan knows why. Yes, I do know why. Um, and Peter Ingersoll says hello on this morning from beautiful Connecticut, USA. 
And right, now that I've done that bit, I'm going to find this photo, whether it kills me or not. Right, give me two seconds. Talk amongst yourselves. I can't do this forever, but if I don't find it in the first... Oh, oh, no, no. I'll tell you what, whilst, when the first article's been read out, I'm going to go through this m mound of paperwork that I took to WordCamp Europe, and, uh, and I'll find it, and I'll show it. And I don't know which of us comes off worse, Taco, to be honest, you or me, but... <laughs> It's it's favourable to no one, put it that way. <laughs> okay. uh -oh. WordPress news for this week. As you very well may imagine, in fact, I would more or less guarantee that anybody watching the show knows what's coming. It's this. Yes, it's WP Engine, who, um, who in the past have been on a bit of a buying spree. Well, they've managed to acquire five things in at one time because they have bought out Delicious Brains. Delicious Brains, of course, is, I think it was founded. I don't know if it was co-founded or maybe there was a whole bunch of them, but I certainly know the name Brad Tuznard. Uh, I believe they're Canadian. They're a software development house just for WordPress, and they've got an absolute slew of products, some of them incredibly uh, popular and famous. Um, but they're all WordPress plugins, except this one quirky thing, which we'll come on to, which they've actually kept hold of. But yeah, they were founded in 2012. You can see all this on the screen. And their, their WordPress plugins range from ACF, which they acquired from Elliot Condon, about feels like 18 months, I'm going to say something like that, roughly speaking. So they, they pulled in. It's much, a, much, much more recent than that. What, was it really? When was it? It's exactly a year. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, I was going to say it was after it was after our acquisition of G of Give WP. So I, I that. wonder. I wonder if mm -hmm. there's some sort of. Um, I wonder if there's a coincidence there. What I mean, I, I wonder if there was some sort Possibly. of non resell clause for a year or something. We'll get into that. Uh, ACF brought along two million customers, so it more or less doubled everything I think that Delicious Brains were doing at the time. But they've also got these. They've got WP Migrate, which is a you know it's a backup and migration solution wp offload media gets all your files your videos and your images over to uh, ses and various uh, aws i should say in various other places oh no 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 that's that one wp offload ses that's the that's the one of for doing your emails and better search and replace anyway the point is brad in this article paints a picture of the team getting a bit overstretched in this year since they bought it they've gone from 10 to 34 Brad felt like his life had been transformed into being a manager of managers, whereas actually what Brad seems to like to do is develop. And so he thought to himself, wouldn't it be good if I could get back to being a developer? What's the quickest route to doing that? And it turns out it's let's flog most of our things. What they haven't flogged is spin up WP, which is basically... I don't know how to describe it's it's a little bit like many of the other platforms that you've come across before where you you click a button inside the platform and it spins up a version of wordpress in, a, in almost immediately um and they've decided to keep that and keep developing that so all the things have gone except spin up wp and also quite a lot of the staff have been acqui hired uh, I won't go through all the names. I don't actually know many of the people, so it would literally just reading out a bunch of names. But quite a lot of the staff have gone over to be WP Engine employees, and obviously the people that were critical on keeping spin up WP have have remained. I don't know what the team looks like. I I, I don't really know what to make of this. I mean, it's amazing for Brad and the team. The only the only thing which I think is interesting, shall we say? Let's put it that way is the, the people who've been on ACF who now have had to think about the fact that they've now gone through two owners in a short space of time. When Brad took over ACF, there was a bit of uh, a PR misstep because he, he questioned whether they would keep their lifetime deals going, and then he had to iron out that PR hiccup which he did, and it got fixed. And now, of course, then everybody was like, okay, breathe a sigh of relief. All my thousand websites that I've built that are contingent upon ACF, I can relax. Well, now maybe the same questions remain, or maybe not, as we'll discover in a minute. But Cameron, Michelle, it's another of these stories. We've had them hundreds of times in the past. This one seems like a big one, though. Let me take that off the screen. So I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you two thrash this one out whilst I look for this photograph. Well, I'm working for a company that has um, done a lot of acquisitions over the last 18 months, 
I I say, you know, hey, congratulations. Yeah. Um, I know that I, I don't know what the situation was for the employees before, but oftentimes when you are an employee at a company that gets acquired, you have access to more things like benefits and um, maybe a different time off schedule. There might be pay increases, uh, things like that. And so oftentimes, you know, as fearful as I was when I first heard that GMWP was being acquired last year, because the first thing you'd think is like, oh my God, do I even have a job? Yeah. Right. And then, but they're reassuring you and they're doing all of these great things. Um, I think that somebody, Taco, has just linked you to the uh, the image. On- oh, okay. Well, I'll do it that way. I'll take, oh, I've, <laughs> I, I appear to have lost it, probably, probably out of shame. Uh, <laughs> anyway, sorry, carry on. We'll do that in a minute. Yeah, no, that's okay. So, but um, oftentimes people talk about what it, what it means for the companies and, you know, that they've growing their, there's these big growth patterns, which is incredibly true. Um, but it, it, they forget to talk about the employees in these situations. And if you're doing it right, you're doing such a good job that the employees that come over to you with the acquisition or the merger decide that they want to stay because it's it's a safe environment to continue the work that they do. So um, you, you you went from Give WP as a standalone thing, right? You it was Give yes. WP, and they were just their mm-hmm. own thing. And then Stella yes. WP took it over. And I remember we had that conversation at the time, and you were really yep. like properly delighted with the um, with the things yeah. that had that had come your way that Give WP couldn't do. They didn't. Maybe it was the budget or the amount of staff, but like things right. like healthcare and all and other mm-hmm. other various benefits. So yeah, it's yeah. interesting if you look at it from the outside. I'm I'm imagining that WP Engine because they they win lots of awards for being a good employee, don't they? Or mm-hmm. at least they seem to tout that. So hopefully, those employees yeah. will be happy with it. Yeah, exactly. I just I did just uh, share an art, another article in the private chat, something that I wrote and reshared this weekend. Okay, um, from Post Status about remembering your employees when you have been acquired. And so that's, you know, I think it's all great. The, the fact that you have um, deeper pockets usually to continue to develop the software in a less um, over, you know, overworked way for your developers, because you've got now this, you know, this bigger group of people you can re- rely on all around. It tends to be a, a good thing, but you do have to remember your employees um, and make this not only a good transition for ownership, and that kind of thing, but making it a good uh, transition for your employees and going from Give WP to Stellar last year, which is part of Liquid Web, um, it was a, a really, really po- positive experience for me and most of the people that I know or have talked to about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank Cameron, you, Cameron. I, I, I just took the like just took the floor on that one, but I'm going to turn it over to you now for your input. Oh, I'm kind of used to it after you know the the giant bio that uh, no one could uh, compete with. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of have mixed feelings about it. Like I kind of do with with all acquisitions. Like obviously, um, I think it will be a good thing for the products. Um, you know, obviously they're now going to have a much bigger team behind it, so more resources. Um, you know, bugs will get fixed quicker. More features will be added quicker. I would assume. Um, and it, it's it sounds like most or all of the team that was working on them before is going to carry on. So yeah, yeah. Um, you know that's always a good sign. It's not going completely into new hands. You know, it's the, the same people that are going to be working on it. Um, but yeah, having had mixed experience with WP Engine at times, you know, there's you know some concern there. Um, so yeah, it's you know mixed feelings about mixed it. Mixed feelings, um, yeah. But what I'm what I'm really not looking forward to is you know one day uh, logging in and and running my plugin updates and finding out that I now have Genesis custom fields and Genesis Migrate DB Pro and uh, all that on it because uh, I've I'm, I would not be surprised if they rebrand them all under the Genesis branding. That's interesting because a few things have been taken in that direction, haven't they? What was it? Was it called Atomic mm. Blocks? There was like the block suite, block, like, block, yeah, and it got got called Genesis Blocks, if I'm right. Um, no, yeah, Block Lab um, was like was what they did to have custom blocks. Uh, yeah, there was something else. Yeah, there was a couple as of well that was pieces. a block suite. Yeah, that got rebranded. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see whether things get sort of rolled in. I, I guess that that's a real concern, though, isn't it? Is that at some point. Um, 
these things do get morphed in some way and changed in some way. And, and with a big plugin like ACF, which I'm Cameron, I'm guessing that you've used ACF before. Um, I yep. use it pretty much on every site. It's one of the few things that just gets dumped in right at the beginning, even if I haven't got a use for it, because I suspect at some time there will be a use and, you know, occasionally it gets uninstalled, but mainly it's just sort of sitting there in every single site. So for me, things like this do actually matter. However, let's give WP Engine a, a little chance to shout about why they think they're good custodians, because this piece that I'm showing now was on WP Tavern and Sarah Gooding, um, you know, she elucidated all of the various bits and pieces and she explained why Brad wanted to sell it. Of course, there's the, the other side, um, which is the WP Engine site. So they've got a blog post, um, over on the WP Engine, uh, dot com forward slash blog site. I'm guessing it's probably a recent piece. Maybe maybe there's a couple that have sunk it down a little bit lower, but it's called What WP Engine's Acquisition of Delicious Brains Products Means for You. And um, I'll, I'll come to this piece highlighted at the top in a moment. But they they basically go on to say in, in fairly, it's like a QA. and a They sort of have posed potential hypothetical questions that customers want, might want to ask. So, for example, will Delicious Brains products only work on sites powered by WP Engine, which you can imagine the sites will always work regardless of whether you're on WP Engine or not. So that might put some people's mind at rest. WP Engine, will, will they continue to support and invest in all the five Delicious Brains uh, plugins and as they've said they're going to keep releasing things um, it says regular updates regular testing new version releases and so on and so forth pricing uh, the big misstep that I was talking about earlier that Brad went through was there was a bunch of people who for years Elliot Condon who created ACF at the beginning for years and years and years he had it available for I believe 49 US dollars for an unlimited lifetime license deal which was fabulous um, and of course, those people that have got it would like to protect that what is a very, very modest investment. And WP Engine have got out ahead of this. Probably, I would imagine Brad has said, look, there's one thing I need to tell you. Uh, you're going to get hit with PR nightmares if you don't get in front of this one. So they have said explicitly, copy and paste it and stick it in an Evernote somewhere in case you need to whip it out with the lawyers at some point. Um, it says basically they're going to honor all lifetime licenses. Uh, lifetime license holders will get all the ACF software updates. They won't be required to pay for version 6 or any other major or minor release. Um, and essentially, they've written a bunch of questions to which they can say, of course, uh, what would you expect? They're not going to write a bunch of questions and say, actually, mm, we're not sure about that. I don't know. But uh, I do find the WP Engine marketing machine quite interesting. I love this little bit at the top. Just, just let me read this out to you and see how your takes it in, dear listener. This is right at the top. It says, they've just gone on to say that they've acquired five plugins. They say, these powerful plugins already play a pivotal role in the way developers build WordPress sites today. And together with Local and Genesis, they represent, and I quote, the preferred way of building WordPress sites for the foreseeable future. That's all I'm going to say about that. So anyway, they got out ahead of it. I, I would imagine the one thing which could have exploded, they've literally knocked it down. So I think, on the whole, bravo. It's good to see them do that, right? You know, a rollout of, um, like, the, the doing the press behind a uh, acquisition like that isn't the easiest thing to do, right? So the, the blog yeah. posts that have to be written, the the emails that have to go out, the press release stuff, that, I mean, I've, I've handled that for um, a couple of our... Um, purchases learn dash and iconic over at uh, stellar wp and it's it's a delicate balance putting it out there and i think they did a really nice job of um portraying this in its best light and getting ahead of things and answering those questions so that there would be less panic that there is sometimes when acquisitions happen yeah because i mean it's essentially those are the questions i think that people want to ask mm -hmm. and, it, and it really does boil down to will i get updates will you honor the pricing that i've got and will it be confined to WP Engine properties in the future? That I think probably yeah. is the, you know, pricing people can probably, uh, you know, they can argue about that until the cows come home. But th the notion that at some point only WP Engine properties may be able to use ACF would have been a, 
would have been a catastrophic thing uh, <laughs> for a lot of people and probably would have ended up. It would up not with, have been a wise decision. No, no. And, and although, yeah, it would, n- nobody, the, for the market, you know? they would never have done that, right? That would literally no, be su- a suicidal move. So why not stick it in a, in a blog post and address it and, and what have you? So that's good. Absolutely. Um, I'll tell you what they're getting, quest- the questions they're getting now, because those have already been answered are, so what are the new updates you're going to do now, now that you have a bigger development team? Like, can we expect to see all of these things we've been asking for all of these all of this time because yeah you've answered the so that's what that those are the questions that come next and i know that oh uh, <laughs> yeah okay so then okay yeah and that will be interesting because obviously elliot did my understanding is that elliot basically did all of it forever and ever um i think Must toward, have yeah i think towards the end he did hire a support person but you know the coding was all done by him i understand well i think cameron's right most of it and we're probably into the high 90%. And then so handing it over to the team at Delicious Brains, I actually haven't really been following their change log and any modifications that they've made, um, but nothing really jumped out. And as I follow well, I'm sure the work- they won't be making any modifications right away. They're going to, no. if they're smart and they are smart, I, I know this to be true. This is a good company with, with smart yeah. people. Yeah, that's right. They're going to do a lot of research. They're going to make sure that they're doing things the right way moving yeah. forward with the products. Actually, that with that in mind, maybe this is a really good idea. Maybe this is a really good time to stick your feature requests in because you'd imagine that the ear the ears are open more in the next few weeks than they 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 will be for mm-hmm. a long time to come because the team are mm-hmm. trying to figure it out, trying to work out what on the roadmap should come first and. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, so okay, so go and submit your support requests, and they'll be like, "Oh, we should never have bought ACF. It's just it's so needy." Ex- yeah. Except that they didn't buy it blind, right? So they did a lot yeah. of research before they made their purchase. They already know what the audience is looking for. If if they're smart, and we know they are, they've been all over the Facebook groups, they've been all over Twitter, they've already done the research of what people are expecting to come down, you know, be handed down next as far as features and and updates in order to know that they were buying a product that they could continue to provide the service to. The, the I guess, the, the, uh, at the end of this, you know, bravo to WP Engine for acquiring it, but really mm-hmm. bravo to the Delicious Brains team for making what's probably a really difficult decision. And uh, Brad was the person portrayed in the WP Tavern article as the person who decided that it needed to happen. So, you know, his role as a founder, presumably he gets to make those decisions. And um, it's kind of great. It's kind of great in the WordPress space when you hear of somebody doing a really great, great job selling what it is that they need to offload. Hopefully it's been profitable for them. But also he now gets to concentrate on the thing that he really wants to do, which is the spin up WP um, which, having seen it in the in the real world, I can only describe as brilliant. So, if it um, if it comes to pass that it gets better and better, well, you know, nobody's arguing with that. Okay, shall we try and find this Twitter photo now? Shall we? Let me see. I I don't uh, even know if I can make. I can't. I can't actually click that. <laughs> can anybody copy and paste that into our private chat, either Cameron sure. or Michelle? Because for yeah. some reason, just, the way the way my I opened it. The way my system works, if I hover over that, it all it gives me is the option to show it on the screen. I can't actually copy okay. and paste yeah, it. One second. I, I, I got it here for you. And now you, you realize go. why you, my humiliation is complete. Let's see if I can make this come onto the page. So this is tw- about, about I don't know, about 36 hours ago, something like that. This is the after party. Uh, and look. Look, there's there's Taco, who we know often sitting in sitting in the space. You haven't where... shared your screen yet. Oh, kiddo! Right here we go. I'm I'm afraid that's why, Michelle. Uh, this is this is <laughs> King is. Taco, <laughs> King Taco. There, look, dressed. This this was such a sublimely cool event. The after party was great. We we won't properly get into it. But I just by coincidence happened to walk outside and and it gets dark much earlier in Portugal than it does here. So it was about, I don't know, nine o'clock, something like that. And it was pitch black. And imagine a forecourt. It's like 100 meters deep, several hundred meters wide, empty of people. And there's a ramp. Right. So as people come up the ramp, you see their head first and then you see their shoulders and so on up the ramp comes about 50 Yoast employees, the majority of whom are dressed as the Dutch royal family, all with 
all with flashing lights. It was honestly, it was pretty surreal, I've got to say. And Taco, you know, sort of right at the front, leading the way, dressed up as a member of the royal family. And the tweet here is, uh, what is it? It's finally, we finally established a relationship that this week in WordPress podcast will never be the same again. And there's me, there's me groveling with on bended knee at Taco, who's looking very demure and very royal. Anyway, that was fun. I thought it was we'll talk a, more about. I thought it was a wedding proposal. Yes, I did too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I hadn't even thought of that angle. Yeah, yeah. that but photo had... is in my possession somewhere, but I do appear to have <laughs> dropped it. I don't know why. Well, it's in it's in possession <laughs> of the internet now, and it will live That's on forever right. in perpetuity. Anyway, it was it's also that was a cool event. My brain. Yeah, just, yeah. Just sorry. Right, if if you're watching this at home, just right click save. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was great. It Press was really good. Tweet, yeah. Type at WP Builds. Yeah, no, <laughs> don't do that. No, don't do that. Anyway, that was that was all oh, a good bit it. of fun. Um, and I'm now going to stop being red, and we'll go back to some normal WordPress news. This is cool. I swear, I'd never heard of this thing before. Um, it's called Insta WP. And it is a plugin which enables you to basically spin up a WordPress website. You go to InstaWP. I don't even know if it's .com or whatever it is. Google InstaWP, I-N-S-T-A-W-P. And you can immediately, and I, when I say immediate, like really quite quick, like a second or more, or a second or less, sorry. And it gives you a WordPress website, which you can then play with for about eight hours. Um, we mentioned a rival product called TasteWP, which does something similar. It actually gives you a little bit longer. It gives you two days. Um, so there's, you know, there's a slight difference in the way it works and various other things. But InstaWP has obviously attracted enough attention that the guys over at Automatic think that it's worth investing money in um, because they've received a seed round. And as, as far as I'm aware, none of those numbers have come out. I'm always a little bit unsure exactly what a seed round means, but my understanding really is that they've been given some money in the hopes that the the product and the, the team over at InstaWP will be able to work on some kinks that they couldn't otherwise have done without a little bit of financial assistance and bring it to market in a slightly different way. Apparently, they've got an agency plan uh, which is available to the Learn w, uh, for Learn WP, which is kind of cool. So I'm wondering if in the future, if you're over at Learn WP and you are trying out a particular article and you want to try a particular thing, you'll be able to click a button and it'll a website will be spun up right there and then that you can fiddle, fiddle with. Kind of cool. Um, yeah, they've got 23,000 sites running at the moment, but um, they've got plans for a uh, like a premium, t they've got that going or, or not, I'm not sure. But anyway, they've received some seed money, which should last for the next 18 to 24 months, which means that they need to stop worrying about, you know, sales and marketing quite as much as they would ordinarily do and concentrate on the the development and bringing it to fruition. It's a cool little product, right? I like it. Yeah, uh, uh, Liquid Web already has that. It's called WPSandbox.io. So we like it too. <laughs> so very similar, same idea, right? You click a button and you're off. So yep, and you can, mm -hmm. why would why would this one? Because I know of that, like I mentioned, I know of Taste WP, and yours is called WP Sandbox. Does, is your WP Sandbox is it a proprietary thing? In other words, do you need to be like a a Liquid Web customer, or is it is it freely available out there on in the wild? Mm -hmm. Yep, I, want, you, I, I, I pasted the link there for you. It's wpsandbox.io. Um, okay. And and we're doing a lot of work on it right now to make it even better. I wonder why then. I wonder why this received that sort of same level of attention from Automatic. Maybe it's because they figure that, you know, um, your version Maybe. already has the backing of a of a company that can afford to bring it bring it on and they, they see something about say, these guys. Maybe they know. asked. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's all it takes. <laughs> Yeah, if that's all it takes to get seed money from Automatic, I'm going to ask. Soon as I this mean, falls over, <laughs> I don't know. can I have some seed money, please? Uh, okay, let's have a look at your one then. Let's put that on the screen quickly. It's this again, wpsandbox.io. Let me click accept. I'm sure I do. Get started now. Do, do, do. Let's see what happens. So you have to enter name, email, password, confirm password. So this is slightly different in that the um, the Insta WP. Let's follow their process, shall we? Let's click on their website. Try WordPress Sandbox, and as far as I'm aware, 
you don't need to enter anything. You can give it a like a, a like a subdomain if you like, but you click launch and let's go. Do, 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 it's done. Give me like three seconds. We're in. So there's no there's no there's no like barrier for surrendering emails or anything, which I think is is kind of a nice feature. I'm not sharing any of this on the screen, am I? It's just occurred to me that none of that was being shared. But look, there you go. Whilst you were watching me and Cameron and Michelle, I was clicking buttons in the background, and there's the site that happened almost immediately. Whereas the WP Sandbox one, I had to fill out an email address and a and a password and things we're like that. We were just getting so. the the podcast edition earlier, and then you know everyone else will. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It must be torture listening to this show. I truly sympathise with anybody who gets through an hour and a half of this on audio. I do apologise. I listen to quite a lot of audio um, podcasts, which obviously have visual content, and they've been made by like the Twit Network or something. And they do a much better job than I do of actually explaining what's on the screen. They actually stop and go, "Okay, for the for the podcast listeners," and then they explain. So anyway, sorry. So there we go. Any thoughts on that, Cameron? Do you use that kind of those kind of tools, or are you more of a local dev man? Oh well, I, I do love my local dev, but uh, no, I've like I'd vaguely heard of it. I was aware of its existence. I thought it was more a hosting platform than it was, mm. you know, a spin up service. So uh, you know, I learned something new today. Um, but yeah, I use Taste WP for that sort of thing, um, and I quite like it. But um, yeah, I might have to to check out InstaWP. Um, yeah, be- before TasteWP appeared, I was using Poopy.life, if you remember that. <laughs> ah, that's a thing. <laughs> it was. Um, oh, I-, I can't remember who owns it, but it was, you know, the same sort of thing. Like it got a, a big promo on-, on the tavern at the time. And then um, it became a proprietary thing. And oh, okay. But uh, yeah, so, one of the big one of the fan nice, of those sort of services. Yeah, I think so because you know the sort of thing that you dip into once in a while. I guess it's if the if they can figure out a way to market it, and and it looks to me like uh, at some point in the future, the intention with Insta WP, I'm sort of reading slightly between the lines of the article, is they're going to reach out to potential hosting providers and provide like a one click install service so let's say that you've been using it for a few hours and you've built something that you think is half decent rather than having to replicate all those steps again you could click a button you know like a stellar button or a wp engine button or or whatever you like button and it then will just throw all of that over onto their service that seems like a really obvious play and uh and quite powerful, you know, if you've spent time actually building something which is half decent on their environment and you can click a button and move it somewhere else, that seems like a really nice idea. A bit like Softaculous is yeah. on cPanel sites. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. It's been so many years since I've been inside of a cPanel. Oh, those were the days. Um, yep. All righty. Okay, I'm now trying to find a tab which is nothing to do with InstaWP. Here we go. This is a sort of community-based piece. We're back at the tavern, Sarah Gooding. Uh, what was this? Third of June. Five for the Future program set to adopt official definition for pledges and contributions. Uh, Michelle, I feel like you would do a better job explaining Five for the Future than I do. do you, is there any truth in that? And if so, do you want to do you want to explain what it is? I, I don't know that I'd do a better job, but oh. uh, you know, Five for the Future is pledging five um, percent of your company, whether it's the human resources part of it or actually monetary contribution to forwarding the open source project. Did I get that right, Cameron? You looked like you had, you looked confused when I said that, like maybe I was getting it wrong. Headphones died again. Oh no. So (laughs) you literally didn't say it, Michelle. That was the problem. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, that that basically sums it up for me. The the intention is Mm -hmm. to, is to get as many Let's go for the word companies, but for companies, read any entity really to commit to individuals. too. Yeah, that's right. Freelancers, agencies, bigger companies, whatever, uh, to commit to offering 5% of things. Uh, and again, my understanding is that that could be 5% of 5% of time um, as well as it could be, mm-hmm. excuse me, 5% of things like revenue and what have you. The, the thing is, there's no real, there's no real clear definition 
about what what things are acceptable to be brought into that system. And that raises the question, well, why does that matter? If people are giving 5% of something, surely, well, it's all just going into the pot and everybody's getting help. And I think the reason it matters is because there's been talk um, about getting something back in return, so some sort of accreditation. So in other words, if you can prove that you are a five for the future, if you genuinely did commit and see it through, then there's going to be some kind of quid pro quo. In other words, maybe you'll get some kind of official thing that you can throw on your website, or maybe maybe there'll be some sort of other arrangement way. I don't know, maybe you'll get a, a discount for sponsorships at WordCamps or something like that. No idea. But that being the case, there needs to be some mechanism to say, okay, this qualifies. This is this is five for the future, and this isn't five for the future. So I'll just quote the the article. Again, I think like I said, but it's Sarah Gooding on the tavern. She says, uh, WordPress is five for the future program, an initiative that encourages organizations to contribute 5% of their resources to WordPress development, is poised to adopt an official definition for what constitutes pledges and contributions. And a couple of weeks ago, Josepha hayden Chomposi. Um, propose the program, give some clear definitions to the ecosystem, and it goes like this. Participation in Five for the Future means consistent effort by an individual or a company via a make WordPress team, that's quite important, to directly support the WordPress open source project and the project's current big ideas, rather than the sole benefit of a company or individual. Simply put, Five for the Future exists to collaboratively invest in the health of the WordPress project, ensuring its long-term sustainability and success. In other words, if you're doing something which is just about, uh, you know, making your company successful, so let's say you're a plugin developer or a theme or a block developer, and you, and you put loads of time into that, the argument goes, well, that's helping the project. Surely anything that makes WordPress's ecosystem bigger and swells it, that is helping. Well, no, not according to this definition. Plugin developers, theme developers, and so on, that's that's not going to be included on the umbrella of this. Um, so you you will have to you'll have to find other more traditional routes of of displaying your chops. So I I just think that was actually quite a probably quite a needed thing because without that clear clarification, it would have been quite easy for a lot of gray areas to be consumed and people to to benefit from that, whereas this is all about making the WordPress project um, bigger and better. Okay, I think I'm done, but I'd like you to chime in if you want. I think it's a great, I think it's really great to have a definition. I think it really helps companies understand what they're contributing to and what is being asked of companies for sure. Um, individuals as well. I don't mean just, just the big corporations. What I don't understand, and maybe because I haven't read the whole article yet, and I don't know if it mentions it there, is how does WordPress know whether or not a company is doing that? Is there like a form to fill out? Like, is there some way to say, hey, by the way, you know, um, for years, I've given all kinds of time to organizing WordCamps, um, working on the on the marketing um, group. I definitely do a lot with community, that kind of thing. And just curious, you know, how, how has that been counted? Has it been counted? So there is a, there is a yeah, there's a little paragraph. Sorry, Cameron, you go. Sorry. I, I believe it's self-reported in your WordPress.org profile and you just... There's a checkbox to say whether you're sponsored or not, and if you check it, then there's how many hours a week you do. Um, I, th I think that's how they track it, but then obviously that's not verified by anyone, you know, on a WordPress team saying, you know, oh, yeah, they're actually doing it. So I, I feel like that's probably the next step is they'll have some sort of verification process. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. Um, having this definition is needed and a good good step forward. Um but yeah, I think it's all self-reported. So, you know, a bit of gamification maybe or of or the uh, system might be happening. Yeah. Uh, there, there was just this little paragraph, which is is the best fit for what you want to know, Michelle. It may not answer your question perfectly, but the, the very last paragraph is, and I quote, the, pro the program's activity is tracked on GitHub, where discussions are open on everything from stats to badges to tracking meetup attendance. 
Many of these are technical issues that require building charts and dashboards. It will be interesting to see how the community and meta teams tackle these challenges to track contributions across teams. Feedback on contribution tracking is still open in the comments to the post. So it would seem that it's TBD to be decided still, but looks like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's going to be some mechanism for, for tracking. I, I guess... I guess with the nature of the project that we've got, because most of the people who are going to be tracking their time will in no way, shape or form be connected to, let's say, for want of a better word, automatic, there's going to have to be some trust, isn't there? And there's going to have to be people sort of saying, well, actually, that thing that I did there took me took me six hours, which represents, uh, a, I don't know, which represents a, a 5% for my entire month or whatever it is. Who knows? I guess there's got to be a little bit of trust. But you're right, Cameron, if um, if it starts to be gamified and people start to use it, because they will, right? Isn't that inevitable? That's inevitable, right? There's going to be some people Absolutely. who, if there's a benefit, will see that as a thing to massage up a little bit. Um, yeah. But think imagine. about the fact that the opposite is also true, right? So there are a lot of people who contribute and had no mm. idea that there's a way for them to you know, let, let somebody know that that's the case. Right. So, yes. yeah, it'd be interesting to see what kind of p power any of the, any of the, like, let's call them badges, the, the sort of certification, if you like, that comes out the other end, what kind of power that has in the industry. Um, you know, in other I words, tweeted my badges the other day and ah. like, there was a lot, I, I just, cause I was like, well, this is cool. I've got two new badges cause I'm on the photo you team. Had about a dozen, didn't you? I have a lot of badges and like I contributed a plugin to the repo, those kinds of things. I was like, I have developer next to my name, which is just the funniest thing ever. But <laughs> oh, that's great. I have, the, I have the ability to learn. Um, but I tweeted about it. Uh, I made a nice little image and that kind of thing. And there was a lot of activity on that particular tweet. People are like, wow, this is great. I want to do more. Somebody said, um, is your profile for sale? <laughs> Because they wanted all my badges. Yeah, they were like, <laughs> just go and copy and paste them and add them into your profile as a photograph. Yeah. I, said, I said, no, but but I, I might be able to will it to you when I die. <laughs> okay, so uh, Taco, who, as we now know, is like the Duke. Uh, oh, I think, I've come up, I think I've come up with something there. I'm going to call him the Duke from now on. Um, he, obviously, is from Yoast. It's a plug-in company. Big concern, right? Hadn't really thought about it from Taco's point of view until just now. He says... Why is contributing? Sorry, why is contributing a theme or plugin not a five for the future contribution, but a contribution to open verses? And I, I, I hadn't really given that enough thought, Taka, but it suddenly occurs to me that you know, there's, there's a bit, there's got to be a grey area here, right? Because as we know, Yoast do an incredible job of contributing back their back their time, but they do that um, in terms of developer time. So they contribute to core and all those kind of things. Presumably that piece. Um, gets the credit, but the all of the time and what have you for the free plugin doesn't get the credit. So I'll, it, you're not the only person, Taco, who was talking about that. So let's just put a couple of comments up. Um, on screen, if you can see it, there was a comment from Adam Warner, who is the WordPress, he's the WordPress czar, let's say, at GoDaddy. He says, I can't help but wonder about the argument to be made that the creation of themes, plugins, and blocks that are made freely available are also contributions that move WordPress forward. GoDaddy sponsored contributor Adam Warner said, and Yoast sponsored contributor Yvette. Now, Taco, apologize to Yvette for what's about to come out of my mouth. Yvette Sonveld. Um, said the term gray area has a negative connotation because gray area is the bit that they're describing as all the pieces that we don't quite understand in this argument um, and that all the activities are essential to keep the software and the community healthy and thriving. I fully understand that these are harder to quantify, she said. I'm going to use uh, <laughs> she instead of trying to butcher her name twice. Uh, personally, I agree that themes and plugins brought out under Creative Commons licenses also help the software and the community thrive and should be included in the efforts that help project um, that, sorry, help the project move forward. So, yeah, let's see. I presume that, um, yeah, the likes of Taco and the Yoast crew and all the other crews that are contributing and giving away their software in some way, shape or form freely, they'll, they'll wish to get their voices heard. So this article, just so that you can, ooh, that's big. Uh, five for the Future 
programme sets to adopt official definition for pledges and contributions. As you'd expect from Sarah, there's all the links to the various and pieces that you need. Okay. Ta Taco says on? your pronunciation of Sonneveld is actually pretty good. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's it's probably not true. He's just trying to be, you know, like a, a decent landlord, <laughs> uh, a decent duke. <laughs> Uh, I'm never going to live this down. I'm going to have to get some. Do you know what I need? I, I need to, yo, uh, Taka, what we need, right, is for you to immediately go and get an icon made of that, just like the Yoast icons of me supplicating to you. That would be hysterical. Let's see if we can make that happen. His next comment. Oh, Michelle's was better, though. Oh, that's, you, know, you see, you see. <laughs> Yes, see. Uh, oh, that's brilliant. Okay, thank you. Uh, Taco, did you get home safe? I'm guessing you're at home now. And if not, what the heck are you doing watching this? Okie doke. Right, here's another interesting one. Jetpack. Any, every time you say the word jetpack, the, the WordPress community either tend to like to have an intake of breath um, or they're quite all right, you know. And um, I have to say, I have never really been a user of jetpack, but I've been, I've definitely been swayed in hearing everybody, and typically, um, my when I say that, most of the people that I listen to speaking about Jetpack don't seem to have a very good opinion about it. And I actually tried it properly for the first time several weeks ago. I like it. I actually like it. I'm using the comments, and that's pretty much all that I'm using. But for that piece alone, it's very helpful for the WP Builds website because we're getting um, people sharing and following inside of that little bobble that that never happened before so you know i quite like it anyway jetpack goes modular says sarah gooding again bless sarah is all i can say since justin has left she's been um she's been given the responsibility to write all the pieces hopefully that will be solved soon because there's jobs available for writers at the tavern if you want to apply jetpack goes modular with more features now available as individual plugins so the leviathan that was jetpack with like 406 billion different features it's been split up into jetpack backup jetpack protect can i just stop saying jetpack at the beginning can i just say what it is so, so. every word i just about say substitute jetpack at the beginning backup protect boost social search crm and you'll be able to get those separately Apparently, if you're a user and you've got everything just hunky-dory at the minute, you don't need to worry or change anything. But they've decided to split it all out. And Cameron, you made an a cool observation just before we just before we went live, which was <laughs> you go. I've, I've found it a little ironic that um, a lot of what's in Jetpack is other plugins that have been acquired by Jetpack, and then. Um, merged into the main Jetpack plugin, and uh, now they're splitting them out again. Like the Jetpack CRM, I believe, a year ago was Zero BS CRM or yes, something like that. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and it was, some it was its own name, thing, it? and then it was yeah. Jetpack, and now it's been split out again. It's you know, it's almost as if it was done right the first time. <laughs> oh, that was beautifully done. Uh, so uh, I'll read it. I think I read that a little bit. Apparently, three of the the ones that I've just mentioned of those, what was it? One, two, three, four, six, were already as available as separate backups. So that was the back. Sorry, as separate plugins. So that was the backup, the CRM, and the boost. But now you can get them all separately. It says here the idea, and I quote: the idea behind splitting out more features into individual plugins is that Jetpack users will be able to install only what they need, instead of assuming the overhead of the all-in-one plugin. This is also a strategic change for Jetpack as it attempts to market its bulk license options for agencies. I don't want to see no uh, much about that, but it, it does kind of make sense to me that if you if you strolled across Jetpack and you were sort of mulling it over and you saw that it did this, 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 and this, if you only need one of those bits, you were probably always going to say, well, I don't need all the other bits. I'll go and find some other WordPress plugin that tackles it. So maybe it's just to address that, just to address the fact that, you know, we don't need seven things when it can be done as one. Michelle, anything on this? So I was a Jetpack user way back when I first started building sites for other people in my freelance days. And I used it primarily for, Cameron, are you sitting down? Because you're going to cringe when I say this part. But I used it primarily for the carousel feature that was built into it. <laughs> and um, He's still okay. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> he's, he's just going to let me know later. Wife? 
<laughs> but but in in my early days that that place was on every single website i ever built <laughs> okay yeah not that place then yeah okay okay <laughs> I mean, but they were big back then um and the other thing was when um when designing for mobile first came in you ha- and everybody was scrambling to change their websites so that they would be able to appear on mobile phones uh jetpack had a feature where you could just flip a switch and that site could be displayed on mobile without, you know, with, it, it scaled it down way. It, it got rid of a lot of images. It did those things, but it was accessible then on mobile phones. And so it was a beautiful stopgap. If you had 20 customers whose all whose sites all needed to be redesigned for mobile, you could at least in the meantime, flip that switch and those sites could be mobile. It wasn't pretty, but the information was all there. And so that was another way that I was able to, especially for my customers who didn't want to um, pay for a new website, I just slipped it over and they got what they got, right? So that, yeah. that was the way it worked. M- Michelle, um, Facebook user, who I don't know who the Facebook user is, regrettably. I'm so pretty sure that's probably Taco. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, especially for you, Michelle, should I use a carousel.com? Um, I'm going to guess it... the answer is always no. Let's yeah. see. <laughs> It does have to be hysterical. Is there a use case for this? No. Is there, yeah. Oh, it's a carousel. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> it's a carousel uh, that, that just says no, 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 basically. <laughs> okay. Okay. Should I use a carousel.com forward slash no uh, is what <laughs> you get cute. when you go there. But um, yeah, yeah, interesting. I, I would imagine this is a, is a decent PR move. They, you know, they can split things out and, and have less people moaning about it. One of the one of the curious things that I saw in there that I hadn't heard about was there they've got this new thing. I think it's still in beta inside Jetpack. It's called Boost, and like you said, Michelle, where you can toggle a button to well, in the past you could toggle a button to sort of bridge the gap between responsive and not responsive. They've got this kind of Core Web Vitals toggle. Kind of feels like that's what what it's for, and it, it goes out and tries to automatically compress your CSS and JavaScript and defer things that I don't really know what it does, but it it seems like almost like a too much of a magic bullet. So I haven't toggled that switch just yet. But anyway, there it is, Jetpack Boost. It says to improve speed and SEO for free in just a few clicks. Don't know. I'll have to see how that works in the future. Right. Uh, next one is going to be very, very brief, uh, just to say that uh, Anne McCarthy's Museum of Block Art is now open for submission. She she launched it a little while ago, and she had some, I guess, friends and colleagues put various bits and pieces in there. And you can find it at Guten... Oh, no, not Gutenberg. That's a screenshot, isn't it? Here we go. No, no, no. Enter museum. How do we get to it? There we go. You go to... Oh, my word. I'm going all the way down the wrong article. Here we go. (laughs) It's block-museum.com. I was looking at um, the Gutenberg Times article there, which which looked very similar. Um, It's there block dot block dash museum.com and i didn't think you could submit things but apparently now you can so if you're a budding artist and you like the idea of trying to create what what you might term as art inside of blocks then it's now open for submissions really it's just a place to go and be a bit voyeuristic and curious and you can see all the different things we mentioned this in the past there's a few new ones on there but if you i mean there there are pretty funkier that one in particular you know i could totally imagine that being on a kind of like a wall in a gallery or something it really is cool and it's all made out of blocks there's there's loads in there some of them a bit silly and some of them very sensible but what you can do is um i'm actually in brave and so it likes to make it look like a readable article you can you can have a little look at what it is and then you can go down and you can simply copy and paste the code if you want to have exactly what you're looking at on the screen now, which looks a bit like, I don't know, it's some lines with lots and lots of shadows on them. It's very cool. It looks a bit like a blind has been pulled down in front of a window. Um, you can just go and copy and paste the code. I guess the intention is A, to look at cool things, but B, to figure out how those cool things were made and all the code is just right down below. And you know it might not come as any surprise to Realize it's uh, all done inside of blocks. Very cool. Anything on that, you two? I just think it's really cool. I love the fact that you can copy the um, the code behind it and use it yourself. Yeah, that's right. It's just there. 
totally not hidden from view. Just, you know, just lurking at the bottom. That's all. That's the only thing you've got to do is scroll down a little bit and figure it out. And just unpick it, really. You know, you, if you're curious and you think, how on earth did they achieve that particular thing? I don't know. You might might never have learned how to do a, a, a curve or something like that. And suddenly you can realize that you can actually do that fairly straightforwardly. Very cool. Cameron, anything or shall we move on? Yeah, I just had a thought. Mm. Um, like mainly regarding the copying of code, I I wonder what licensing that it is uh, um, conforming to. Because do you mean the obviously contributing to WordPress and extending WordPress is GPL, but this is content. So, ah. you do know, you mean just, in terms of like the, the images, or do you mean in terms of the you know the the, the CSS, for example? Yeah, just just the code in general, you know. Yeah, uh, interesting. Is it Creative Commons is it going to be GPL like the rest of WordPress is? I'm going to click the contribute button. Let's let's see if let's see if we give up rights to all of that as we go. If you'd like to contribute to the directory, here are a few guidelines. Da da da. Using a block, blah blah blah. Use the latest, pushing the boundaries. Of, so that's just guides on what they want it to look like. A small group of volunteers. No, there's no caveat in there. They just want a high resolution screenshot the HTML markup of the blocks, a social media account that we could link to for your submission, and a title for your piece of art. There doesn't, at least on that form, appear to be anything which says, I surrender anything. So that's an interesting point. Yeah, maybe that's something that needs to be addressed. But um, yeah, yeah. Because presumably you, you should own the the images and what have you so there was an image in there it's uh and test.mystagingwebsite.com i'm assuming that's one that Anne has knocked up somewhere or she's got from somewhere maybe it's possible she's she's linked that the image is from unsplashed so i don't know cameron that's a good that's a good point um let's yeah, see you, if any you know it's not not the wisest idea to just willy-nilly copy code mm, yeah good idea stuff. yeah um, yeah you know it might be something for them to think about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good point. Let's change totally change gears and talk about the the most astonishing thing that's happened to me all last week. It was WordCamp Europe. Look on the screen is the Super Bock Arena. Um it's like a football, like a you know, soccer ball that's sort of had two thirds of the bottom of it chopped off. All I can say is that picture does this venue no justice. It was absolutely massive, much bigger than it looks there. You went inside and it was, honestly, I reckon you could you could easily have, I don't know, watched a, a tennis match on the inside, you know, with thousands of people surrounding it. In fact, I think at some point it was actually a sports stadium and then... Um, and then it got acquired, it got turned into seats, got put in so that they could be pulled in and pulled out and so on. And it's called, have a guess why it's called the Superbock Arena. Let's see, see what you see what you can come up with. Cameron first, why Superbock? Honestly, I don't know. Like the first thing that's coming to mind is Springbok, which is like no, the South that, African that, rugby team. Yeah, that's that was and something I'm that gonna guess it's got nothing to do with that. No, Michelle. I have no idea. Beer. It's a brand of beer. Oh, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> throughout Portugal, in the same way that in the UK, if you go into a pub, there's always like one or two beers which are just absolutely Fossils. ubiquitous. Every every place that I went to in Portugal to to get a beer, so you know, one um, there was there was Superbock. It appeared to be like the 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 brand in in Portugal. So I guess they they sponsored the whole arena, and their logo is a circle. So I guess if you look at it from a certain angle, if you looked at it from above, the Super Bock Arena would fit that really perfectly. It was a three-day event. It went from Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday was the contributor day. Here's a nice statistic, um, although it was probably a very difficult thing for the organizers to cope with. Apparently, something in the region of about 500 people had registered in order to do uh, contributions on that day, but 1,200 people turned up. And you are supposed to have ticked a box on the form um, to say, and, you know, but are you, are you ever going to turn away somebody that shows up to do contributing? The answer is no, but we were all asked to eat less food. Because, I'm sure. yeah, I mean, the, the biggest concern genuinely was, I mean, it wasn't like 
go away. There's 700 of you too many. It's we're not going to have enough food to to give to you all. So they uh, they they just were very you know thoughtful and said, please just put only what you want on your plate so that everybody else can eat. But that's really cool. So more than double the amount of people who thought they would contribute did contribute. I confess at that point I was doing a different thing, so I wasn't really able to engage in any of that. So I didn't really see it, but friends tell me it was really useful. And then on the the main event itself, 2,700 people uh, were in attendance. I don't know if that's attendance or registered, of which, check this out, 60%, so 1,007, no, 1,600 had not been to a WordCamp before. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Right, and the reason that's awesome it's because I think it's fair to say that in the last few months, not only has the whole COVID thing been worrying people in terms of should I get on a plane and go to Portugal? Well, clearly enough people thought, yes, I can do that. But there's this slight concern in the community that engagement with the project has taken a bit of a hit. You know, how many how many Zoom calls can you sit in front of? How many how many meaningful things can you do on a Zoom call? And and the real world events are just better, you know, more gets done, more ideas gets generated, more quirky, um, unexpected things happen because you bump into somebody and you just get chatting and who knows what comes mm-hmm. out of it. Some of the, uh, my understanding is some of the biggest projects in WordPress have come out of coincidental meetings in corridors and so on. And so that's a really cool thing because if 60% of people turned up were brand new, that's fresh blood, um, and it was, yeah, it was just really, really good. Really great. Uh, Are you somebody that enjoys the swag? Did you pick up swag? Do you know what? I didn't pick up any swag and I didn't order any swag. There are two reasons for that. Number one, um, I didn't request it because I don't really need it, if you know what I mean. So from the environmental, that's my bit. I'm not blowing any trumpets or anything. I just think I don't need any more T-shirts. I really, really don't need any more T-shirts. But also my luggage allowance was really tight. So even if I'd wanted Mm. to do it, I would have been really jeopardizing the ability for me. I would have paid a lot to make the luggage heavier going back, if you know what I mean. So there's that piece as Mm -hmm. well. Because I took some some camera, not cameras, like um, microphones and recording equipment Mm -hmm. to do interviews, you know, like this. And um, and it bumps up the weight really quickly. Technology weighs a lot more than clothes. (laughs) So so I was bumping up against, really bumping up against the weight limit. But there was lots of swag. They presented them really nicely, or at least I think what I saw. So instead of just giving T-shirts away, um they they gave them away in these lovely little tubes so you almost like um you know like if you bought a really nice bottle of port or something like that it comes in a tube with like a lid that you can Mm -hmm. prize off the top so you've got something to keep that you could put things in some sort of useful Mm -hmm. little like storage device and uh, and i saw tons of people in the airport wearing their t-shirts so it, it was there was lots and lots of that there was a fabulous after party uh, it went from about, um, I don't know, about 8.30 till guess when it finished? 5 a.m. You know, all right, okay, yeah, you're right, 5 a.m. <laughs> but I'm used to them finishing at like sensible o'clock, you know, like 1 o'clock or something like that. But no, 5 a.m., which is pretty extraordinary. It was, a, it was a Queen tribute band, so depending on whether or not you like Queen would have really affected whether or not you like the event. Personally, I'm on the side of let's go somewhere else, shall we? Um, so we we did it for a little while and then me and Peter and a couple of others just <laughs> broke away and yeah, went to the bar with lovely olives that I mentioned. But an absolutely magnificent event of which I saw almost none because I was in a basement with no windows. Yay! <laughs> taco, taco, you can you can guarantee that that's true, isn't it? A sort of basement down in the down in the bowels of the Superbock Arena, uh, which was quite hot, <laughs> put it that way. But really, really nice event. And honestly... Well, I'm, I'm going to... If Taco, if you're listening, I'm going to DM you my mailing address because I want those stroke waffles that I saw at the oh, Yost booth. Oh, I have. I, Taco... <laughs> My kids have already nailed one of the boxes of the strobe waffles or whatever they're called. <laughs> and there's another box which is waiting just for me. Taco's advice, this is how you eat them. Get a nice coffee and dip them in the coffee. Set there you go, top, expert yeah. advice. Or, or you set them on top and let them let the heat of the coffee come on them. Uh, yeah. Oh, what? Literally on top? Mm-hmm. Maybe you set it on top and then the steam, 
the steam of the coffee comes up and it melts the caravel and things in there and makes it just ever so lovely. Do you know, maybe that's what he meant. I wasn't really paying attention. I was too busy just like, you know, bowing and scraping at the time. Uh, I was on a knee, if you recall. King Taco. That's yes. right, King Taco. King Taco, that sounds cool. It sounds like a really big thing that you get at a restaurant, doesn't it? Um, so there was that. That was a really cool thing. Oh, by the way, um, I am in the. I'm going to take you to the uh, the community bit. Let me see that. Where are we? The home. Let me see if you can find it, because I want to show you the the picture. Here we are. Here's the picture of everybody on contributor day. Let me just put you it. Need on to the share screen. it. Yeah, yeah, there it goes. <laughs> and uh, um, look, there. There's all the you know the good people. And see, there, yeah, just yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. That's Dan. Maybe. He's really bit, and then next to him, this little grey-haired chap, right, <laughs> at the, right at the back. I love there it. I, am. I love it. Yeah, not pushing ourselves to the front. And so that was just the best. Beautiful to connect. Beautiful to be there. Lovely venue. Wonderful time was had by all, and hopefully, <sighs> lots of learning was done. Not that. Um, um, go on. I thought Michelle. I had. I thought I had made amends with my FOMO for this event, but now it's even worse. <laughs> Yeah, I wish I'd, yeah. I wish I'd been there. Next oh, year. I I so wish you'd been there. L little thing, little moment of concern though. On the on the Saturday, so the last day, an email went out. I don't know how this is going to play out in the days and weeks to come, but um, a few people at the event had got COVID. I mean, let's be honest, that's totally inevitable, right? There's just no way with three close to three thousand people that it's going to be an, an event free of that side of things. But they, I presume they felt unwell um, because there was no sort of mandatory testing going on and they removed themselves from the event for the, for the remainder of the time and anybody that had been in touch with them that they knew about uh, was contacted and I was one of those people. I, I was in real close proximity to somebody that was positive and so I was uh, given a test which I did and then I did another one before I got on the plane and then I did another one this morning and touch wood somewhere there's some wood there's some wood um touch wood i i seem to be clear at the moment but um i'm put I'm putting it down to tacos sort of like you know touching of hands laying on of hands just like healing me uh so where's We're it next time free. you don't get it that's right yeah this time tomorrow i'll be laid up going taco it doesn't work um where are we next time do you know do you know where athens where oh Oh boy. Athens, Greece. That's so exciting. Look, so Word Camp Europe 2022. Get the dates in your calendar. Uh, Athens, Greece. Actually, could 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 one or, or both of you Google, um, whilst we're doing this, what the typical temperature is at about this time in Greece? Because I'd, I'd be really curious. Portugal was a perfectly balmy sort of 22, 23, 24 degrees centigrade. Probably won't mean so much to Michelle as it does to Cameron. I'm, you're in centigrade, right, Cameron? Yes. Yeah. So that's a really, that's a nice temperature. I've got a feeling that Athens is going to be a little bit, a little bit warmer. Um, it says 80, 80, high, 85. Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Average 29, high, lower 20, which is uh, quite nice. Yeah. Not much rain. So okay. it yep. should be middle of summer over there, more well, or less. Yeah. So. so what was that in Fahrenheit? 80? 80... 85, high, 68, low. Okay, so to me, that's like that's like any, anything that begins in a three is starting thirty degrees. That is, and I'm guessing anything beginning with a nine, like a ninety, you're straying into the the. It, for me, at least, anyway, I'm straying into like oh, it's a bit hot. So I'm pleased to hear it starts with a two as the high. That's pretty good. Um, and an eight, which is good here too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice. So basically, really nice time of year as well. So get it in your diaries, eighth to the tenth of June, twenty twenty three. I would imagine that. Um, you know, the venue, I don't know anything about, but I'm sure it's been booked. Um, and we'll see you in Athens next year. I hope to go. That would be really nice. And there's a nice little promo piece here. It's at europe.wordcamp.org forward slash 2023. But anyway, beautiful, beautiful event. It was really nice. Thank you to the the, the large amount of people who... Um, who I was able to hang out with. It was absolutely lovely. Thanks to a whole load of people who enabled me to go to some of their events there was a lot of really nice events and i was really pleased to be able to attend some of those so that was lovely including by the way michelle i'm going to embarrass myself here um the stella wp crew did a sushi evening 
And mm. turns out that my favorite food in the world is sushi. Um, I always knew this, uh, but I was incapable of speech as I was eating it. It was that good. It was a wow. phenomenally good restaurant. And I, I was literally in awe. In fact, I embarrassed myself quite a lot because I, was, I had to shut my eyes to concentrate on the food. It was that good. Um, <laughs> but thanks, thanks also to WP Engine. For that they put on a really nice event, as did GoDaddy. They had an event on a boat, and I'm really appreciative to all those uh, lovely companies who uh, invited me along so that I could uh, you know, just embarrass myself uh, like that. Okay. That's the WordPress stuff done. Now we're going to talk about cookies, staying on a food theme. I don't even get what this is. My son plays something called Cookie Clicker, uh, and I don't get it. So, Cameron, this is yours. You're going to have to explain what the heck is Cookie Clicker. Um, it's like the, the original idle games. It's a... Uh... JavaScript game that you play in your browser, and so if, hang on, uh, wait, wait a minute. I don't even know what that means. What's an idle game? Um, pretty much, the computer plays as much as you do. Um, oh. like you buy upgrades and stuff, and then it automatically generates your resources. Okay, so, so I... yeah, they um released a gigantic update, um, like end of last week or over the weekend or something like that. Um. And yeah, I'm totally addicted to this game and it's heaps of fun. Um, <laughs> and I, I often look at it with half a developer eye, you know, being that it's written in JavaScript and it's like the Steam version, it's just an Electron app wrapper around the browser. So, um, yeah. Have you taken it to pieces Tons then fun and seen and, how know, it all works? Yeah, yeah. You kind of look at it and you're like, oh, you know, I, I, I try and think like, oh, man. If I if I was writing, you know, this sort of game, and you're like, oh yeah, I could do I could do it like this, and oh, you know, that's a clever idea, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, my son plays this, and he basically has it as a little widget in the top left hand screen whilst he's doing other things. And all I can understand is that there's a number which continually goes up and up and up by huge amounts every second, like you know, a billion a second. What is the point? You're just supposed to create cookies. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, well, there's there's about 600 achievements that you can get from you know doing certain things and earning so many cookies. Um, so like to finish the game, so to speak, is to you know get all the achievements, which I've got about 50 to go. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, like I got into it thanks to a. April Fool's Day joke video from a YouTube channel called Alt Shift X. They do a lot of really good like TV uh, um, show analysis, and yeah, it's it's quite funny. It's yeah, you know, cookies. You know, just it takes over the universe. It becomes everything. You know, <laughs> it's great though, isn't it? Because normally, if you look, if you get a game, it's so complicated that you could never tear it to pieces and have a look at it. But because this, it's really just doing a couple of things, isn't it? That's that's yep. my impression of it. It's just basically you're trying to outcompete the rest of the universe to create more cookies uh, at a higher rate of at a higher rate than everybody else. And my son is very proud because he's up to like two billion a second or something. But you you just sort of said when I told you that you were like amateur <laughs> rookie <laughs> numbers. That's a that's a low number. But it just sort of sits there. But you've been able to take it to pieces and learn a few things. That's cool. Yeah, back before it was on steam and just in the browser yeah i wrote little scripts to automate parts of it and that sort of thing so it could you know <laughs> run even more idly without me having to do anything so did you did you basically hack it and cheat and make yourself a little more, bit more... <laughs> That's so good <laughs> a cookie clicker uh we're looking at the steam powered version uh, steam is of course like a multi-platform gaming service uh, where you can buy and buy and get your games downloaded but there you go cookie clicker uh, not to be missed especially if you like really big numbers which change second by second let's move on to something back back in the wordpress space we had a, a non-wordpressy one there this is uh this is michelle's clip 
that she's brought up. This is a piece that you wrote. Now, this is curious because we don't normally feature things from from the past. But you've got um, you've got a piece that you wrote, Michelle, in twenty nineteen October uh, November called Post Word Camp Emotions. Tell me about it. What's this yeah? So. One? So um, Yoast dug this up and, and retweeted it uh, or tweeted it out this over the weekend um, because it's, we're all coming back to WordCamps for the first time um, in a few years. And the, that um, after event letdown that we sometimes experience after big things like weddings, um, if you've ever been in plays, we used to call it the su- Sunday letdown because Saturday night was the end and the next day you're like, what do I do with myself now? Um, being in, in those mountaintop experiences like you do when you're with 3,000 of your closest WordPress friends and then going home to your cat or whatever yeah. it may be, your family, there are, you, you do feel emotions. Um, and sometimes you can't even put your finger on what it is, but sometimes you feel down or, or you might feel more energized or less energized. And basically no two people are going to respond exactly the same coming off of an event like that, but it's okay to recognize that you've that has had an impact on who you are and or how you're feeling going forward, um, even if it's just for a short while. And so I put I put all that in words and then gave you some ideas about ways to move forward, um, acknowledging those kinds of things. So you said it's okay to feel down. I'm just summarizing the the main things. Mm-hmm. This is after the word camp. Uh, right. It's okay to feel energized. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not really on that. That that is not the page I'm on. Uh, <laughs> write down everything you want to do and remember. I didn't really have a chance to attend many talks, so I can't do that one. Cry if you want to. Well, there's a bit of that. Uh, reach out to others. There's a bit of that for me as well. Spend time with loved ones. Oh yes. Uh, see a doctor. Thankfully, not this time around. But I do have a sort of sense of deflation, little little bit of uh, been building up to it for, in my case, not a very, very long time, just a matter of weeks, but getting excited over the last few weeks. And there's that thing where, yeah, you're sort of back to normal life and what have you. And yeah, take care of yourself. Make sure that you've mm-hmm. got people around yeah. you and things to do. And, um, you know, if you're, feeling, if you're feeling it hard, go and check this out. It's called, you can probably Google it, Post WordCamp emotions and it was written by michelle um ba, 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 and i suspect this will be our last one of the day because we're closing in on the uh, one and a half hour mark you wanted to just let us know about some learn dash updates yeah, right so learn dash has released uh, 4.2.0 we'll be um, announcing it officially this week but it has dropped um, including some new features that people have been requesting like uh, cloning your courses so you can duplicate them very easily uh, without having to, you know, copy paste, copy paste. Uh, bulk editing you can do now. We've added Razor Pay, which is um, a payment gateway in India that uh, that people have been asking for. Um, we've a- uh, we've added. Sorry, my mouth's not working. We've added the option to have purchase invoices that you can email out to people, and then also drip content for all of our step types. So there's all kinds of things, new features. Of course, there's updates, there's bug fixes, like there always is when you have a release. But those new features are things that our um, customers have been asking for and that make it an even stronger, better um, LMS for you to be able to use on your WordPress website. There's quite a lot of updates as well, but there's there's a really large Mm -hmm. list of bug fixes, possibly like 30 or 40, it looks like, over there. But the the RazorPay one's really interesting. I've, I've not come across RazorPay. As you said, I think it's a, a primarily based in India. But mm-hmm. whenever I go into a Facebook group and I see some platform launching, there always seems to be some clamor to have RazorPay uh, mm-hmm. added right from the start. So I'm guessing it must well, be, you know, the Indian in, subcontinent is, is a lot of people. It's a very big market over there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you want to be able to make sure that you have... Um, a payment gateway that people are able to use mm. so that you can sell more or, you know, GiveWP has RazorPay as um, an option as well so people can donate um, within India. So, Oh, look at that. We always get some sort of nonsense we got a bot. on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a bot. I'm just going to get rid of the little bot. I'm sorry if you've had to cope with the silly comment that comes in always from Twitch. Twitch. What's that? Are they making you Twitch? Oh, that's good. I like it. Uh, yes, a little bit. Um, I don't. I, yeah, I don't even know why we go out on Twitch. There's no audience there for us. But it, all I have to do is click a button, so we just go out there and see what happens. Um, oh, bless you, Taco. He says he's well. He says he's energized. He says physically he's tired, uh, but he's mentally on a high from meeting all 
the friends. Yeah, that was that was the big part, right? That was absolutely beautiful. Really, really cool. We run out of time. Um, I'd like to first of all say a great big thank you to uh, both Cameron and Michelle for joining us today. Um, thank you to anybody who came. I realise that you know, if um, quite a lot of the audience are probably post <laughs> post World Cup, so uh, but anybody that's listening to it on the podcast afterwards, uh, if you want to leave a comment, go to wpbuilds.com, search for episode number two twelve, and you can leave a comment. And it's jetpack, so you know, make of that what you will. It's time for the humiliating hand wave, uh, where we've all got to raise our, got to get the camera, get the hands in, get them waving, get them waving, get them waving, smile and wave. Thank you so much. Thanks for the show, folks, says Taco. I can't, couldn't agree more. Thanks for the enjoyable week last week, Taco. Thanks for the shooden flumbelabons, whatever they're called. I will raise Swap them. Off. Yeah, those, <laughs> those, they. I've got two tubes. Um, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Have a good week. Thanks, Cameron. Thanks.